Good evening, everybody. And welcome to the Tri Board meeting. Um, I'll sign a little paperwork right here, and then we'll get started. Maybe see a couple more people show up. And we are in the magic mu music room, as my daughter called it. She loved this place. Do you want to sing? Do you want to sing? <laughs> yeah. I have my accordion. You play accordion? Really? Do you really? Oh, I have it. Let's have, let's have Probably a, a tri-board talent show. <laughs> you could. It's a little rusty. Hey, the last talent show I was in was the Williamsburg Rotary one. <laughs> and I lost to a Padon twirler. <laughs> Josh, you missed one. That's cool. That's oh, cute. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we have we have finance committee, school board. I and then we're here. I guess we should just go ahead and start. Okay. So the big thing we were going to talk about tonight is the SWOT analysis. We have the submittals from most of the departments. I think schools is still coming, which they told us that's fine. So <clears throat> if anybody wants to kick off. Um, their, their thoughts on the, I mean, there are many, many common threads. IT's being the biggest one I, in there. Um, the other one is staffing. There's a lot of comments about staffing. Um, come on, someone just jump in. <laughs> just from the perspective of the departments going through this for the first time, I think we should uh, commend the departments for the excellent uh, thinking and, uh, and effort that went into uh, preparing their SWOT analysis. Uh, and just for the folks at home, SWOT is an acronym that stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats. Uh, and we had a lot of questions, a lot of discussion in town hall, but people uh, worked very hard on them and uh, submitted them on time for the most part. There are a couple of uh, people who are still working on theirs and we'll get those to the board as quickly as possible. But I think in general they did a great job with a, uh, with an analysis that uh, none of us were very uh, familiar with and so it was a learning process for us, a good opportunity for us to reflect upon the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats uh, and I think it helped uh, people clarify the shadows of their minds uh, as to uh, how they fit into the larger picture and where they think the town is going. Um, so, I mean, I certainly echo what David said. Uh, my first reaction when we, they were turned in was I was um, extremely impressed with the, um, the quality of the input. I mean, it was very obvious that the departments uh, put a fair amount of thought process into this before they, they put it on paper. And, you know, just kind of reminding everybody, too, why we're doing this. I mean, it isn't just for the purpose of coming up with, with a list. Um, it's also really to engage people in this process. So um, what I was really heartened by was, it, again, to, to echo David's point, uh, I think people took that very seriously. And as a result of it, um, I believe that these are pretty, uh, there's some pretty direct and open and honest um, concerns that are expressed in here, which is really important for us to hear. To Guilford's point, I think, you know, the first thing I was looking for um, were common threads because I think that helps us prioritize. Um, then the second thing I was looking for as I read through them were uh, hot spots or areas of particular, you know, weaknesses or threats that we haven't been talking about or addressing as a select board that probably need to bubble up a little bit higher than they have been. Um, and then there were definitely some things that I kind of scratched my head and said, huh, <laughs> you know, so we'll want more clarity um, from the department heads on that who, who authored those items. But uh, to your point, Guilford, it seemed like the, the very common threads had to do with uh, people and resources. And people in a variety of ways, um, stress levels, uh, bench strength, uh, transfer of, of institutional knowledge. You know, we have an awful lot of, it, it was interesting to see in strengths, you know, over and over and over again, people talked about the fact that they 
um, really enjoyed working with each other. I mean, that came across loud and clear. So a lot of people were um, commenting on that, that they had confidence in their coworkers, that they think that there's a tremendous amount of knowledge and we've got a really smart group working here. But then you have to put that in the context of, of wages and monetary constraints, et cetera, um, workloads. So, um, you know, I know we've, we've talked in the past about, um, you know, we don't really have an HR committee or a personnel board, but from my mind, I think that's something that, that the human resource aspect of this, we really need to maybe accelerate some conversation. And then on the financial side, not, not a huge surprise that there were a lot of comments about a lack of, um, lack of funding, uh, appropriate funding in the, in the departments, which you certainly expected, because we do talk about that a lot. But very specific, as you're saying, Gofford, to um, IT. And again, I think that that's something I know we've already talked about and we're trying to address, but it shows you that that is an absolutely pervasive um, problem that we have to do something about sooner rather than later. I think it was clear that one department didn't actually know what the other one had for IT. Mm -hmm. That you know, and there were a lot of things that we could put together so that all of the departments were hooked together and had the same um, system. I know what it is, you know, with the hospital when somebody else has a different system than what I have, it's, mm -hmm. it's bedlam and it just doesn't flow. So if, if we were all able to be able to have access to that, I think that would make things work a little bit better. So I think what we need to do is tie in everything that's commonality that we can, you know, fix and get together so that the communication, the IT, and those things get get addressed. I think it's, it benefits the entire town. Other other towns, uh, departments have very specific needs that are not that are kind of individual to, to them. But I think you know if you start to increase the communication and the availability to send reports back and forth and communicate with them, I think that's a much better step. You know, let's let's put it together. Let's see where we overlap and understand that and go to work on starting to get some of these. Programs implemented. Can I can I tack on something to that? Just just another point I thought of, Jerry, when you were talking. Um, another thing that I look for in these things is, you know, we're always talking about money. We're always talking about resource allocation and you know where where do we commit effort, um, which means that we may be taking something away from one project and putting resources on another. I'm kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul half the time. But um, the other thing I I always look for is um, what can we do that does not involve money? And Jerry just used the key word communication. I think in a, in a lot of these um, analyses there were comments about uh, a concern about the timeliness of communication, the quality of communication, the you know, content of communication, confusion about who should be involved in decisions, etc. Thinking maybe sometimes the wrong people are involved in certain decisions. Um, that, that's a cheap problem to fix uh, because that, that isn't specific to needing additional resources. That's, that's a behavioral change and it's free. So from a taxpayer's standpoint, you know, I think that there are things in here that don't necessarily need to wait to FY17 to deal with. Um, and, I, and I'm also hoping that we can uh, really take a good look and try to problem solve around those issues. Does capital planning have any money allocated in the next year or two to uh, uh, any computer upgrades to the different departments? I think we're waiting for the, we're going to do the IT analysis, or the, it's actually in our packet to go over that RFP. I didn't know if it was part of the five-year plan already. I don't think so. Okay. I thought we did talk about last year doing an IT audit. Right, so that's in their package for tonight uh, for them to give me the authority to go out. These for, guys? Yeah. Okay. But it started it yet? I thought it was already. Yeah, I thought so too. That was had a slow start. So it will go out to bid to do an IT audit. Yep. Do you have names of who to send it to? Uh, yeah. Well, we would send it to the local vendors, but also we would advertise it on this on the central register. I'll send you some names because we okay. just did it at the COG, and it. That would be great. Very Thank helpful. You. Right. So what's the time frame for that? Because if we're trying to get something into the capital plan for the fall town meeting, which I thought that's what we were trying to do, how long does an audit like this take and what are the, what's the probability of having that in time? They don't actually take very long once you get somebody committed to start right. the process. 
the, the, the process in and of itself well, isn't necessarily linked. I know where I work, that takes a long time sometimes. Well, look where you well, work, yeah. though, Lynn. <laughs> the, it will be the length of the procurement that's yeah. the right. time-consuming right. thing. Right. So as soon as I get the permission to go out tonight uh, for bid, I will uh, set the deadlines for the receipt of uh, bids, and we should have that uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, the, the bidding process won't take very long. And when does town meeting warrant close? Uh, uh, August uh, 26. It won't be done by then. Yeah, but we can still have a placeholder. Yeah. And then we have mm -hmm. a placeholder in the warrant, and then we get a number before yeah. that time period. We can always adjust the warrant on the, the we, number on the floor. We have the money already in place to fund this. To fund the, the, the RFP. The audit, right. Yeah. yeah. But not to fund any the results. Any results the that we decide what, yes. Program. I, I have a uh, I have a placeholder on the right. draft warrant, so, okay. so that's kind of how it's going to have to flow a little bit. I'd like to see it be more than just hardware, but also software. If yep. it is not already, and that that really I think we should have a goal of trying to have a townwide networked software, so that we aren't. Um, it's pointless to upgrade hardware and keep with archaic software. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking, I'm asking for software and hardware uh, analysis as well as opportunities for voice over internet protocols and, and uh, networking so that we can at least put together the five-year plan, technology plan for the town. And are we using the, um, our CAI, the Mass Broadband 123 CAI connection in the town hall and the schools yet? No, it's not uh, been lit up. You should, if you haven't, be putting that in to see how, because yep. using those connections can help with the networking and mm -hmm. make it more seamless and makes it easier to go to the yeah. VoIP phone system. Let me make specific reference to that in the scope of work. Because the whole system for us is already set up through Hadley, isn't it? They already passed through and The CAIs, yeah. yeah. It's it's the both the elementary school, not Hopkins, but the administrative building. Yeah, go figure. Go figure. And town hall. And maybe the police station. The administration uh, yeah, building station. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, just the administration building? Yeah. Oh well that makes it easy. So Hopkins, yeah. So almost everything's hooked up except for DPW and the library and the senior center then. And the library is. The library yeah. already is, yeah. but yeah. probably um, already is using it through a MARS account, the Mass Association of Regional. I don't know why there isn't an L in MARS, but it's something to do with libraries. Yep. Repositories? Regional repositories? Ooh, nice. System? Yeah. Massachusetts? Yeah. Sorry. Tonight, huh? I stayed at a <laughs> Holiday Inn Express last night. You got your ducks in the row. So one of the other things I found interesting when I was reading through these is, um, like you said, there's things I didn't understand. The Meals on Wheels program, is we contract that out. Yes. I didn't know we contracted mm -hmm. that out. Right. Yeah. Hampshire. And I've never heard of a waiting list. I didn't know we had a waiting list. Yes. That's the first thing I noted. And then the other issue is we are doing a planning. This is for more of the people at home. We are doing a planning uh, master plan update. And one of the things Council on Aging brought up was senior housing, but there's a lack of senior housing. Mm -hmm. So if you really believe there's a lack of senior housing and you're filling out your master plan, you should put that in there for the, the master plan study because uh, um, I haven't got to that point yet and I don't pay attention to senior housing in Hadley. So. But I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I know people have talked about that, but there are people that have... Uh, moved into town that are not Hadley residents first. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess I would have to ask what the priorities are if people from Hadley are on a waiting list and they've taken people from outside. How does that work? I don't think it's necessarily uh, just referring to Golden Court. I think it's referring to Con Street in Northampton and, and uh, Applegate, Applewood up in, in Amherst that there's no setup right now for people to move into it, the kind of a senior. Housing location. Let me tell you. I, I, but but I even, you know, um, the pending. Um, Greenleaves has. Um, Greenleaves does have it, absolutely. There's, there's some over there. Yeah. And 
I, with the I, project, Barry Roberts project over here, I mean, that's, I don't think that's the type of senior housing that they're necessarily talking about yeah. because that's going to be such relatively expensive. The planning the boards had many conversations oh. regarding what affordable housing is because right. what people feel is affordable housing and what the state feels is affordable housing mm -hmm. is, is kind of miles away from right. each other. So Well, they're putting up Christopher Heights um, up in uh, at the state hospital, um, which is going to be for low-income housing. I uh, just We just mm -hmm. talked about it at work today, mm -hmm. and it's going to be 62 or older. At the Northampton State Hospital. Yeah. yeah. And it's called Christopher Heights. It's going to be for low income uh, housing for elders. Mm -hmm. But not in Hadley. Not in Hadley. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But again, it's run by the state. I said, maybe that's where it all comes in on mm -hmm. applying for mm -hmm. um, residency. The it's just a state <coughs> project. Mm -hmm. So, so in terms of approach on this, the the next step with this would be to have some of the departments walk through and then maybe have an ear towards certain issues? Yes, and actually I was thinking if we had questions, like I have a couple of questions about the fire one already. Mm -hmm. um, things that I thought we were interested in or considered concerns which didn't make it on here. Um, so maybe we should provide those mm -hmm. into the departments and ask them what about this, what about this, sure. if we have those. Um, the one that came out, there's no, no talk about ambulance. We've mm -hmm. talked about ambulance and there's no talk about the North Station. Do we can if he's, um, maybe he talked about those in generalizations and wrapped it up in something else. Those are, but I was thinking that that might be the next step for all the boards is to go through it and say, if there's anything we think is missing from our discussions in the budgets last year and our discussions, and make sure that they know that before they come in and talk to us. Mm -hmm. um, Do you want to, um, should we collect those at a central repository by a certain date and then get that out to everybody? Or do you want each one of us kind of going? No, I think we should send them all into the town administrator and then he can pass them on to the department heads. Um, yep. We won't meet again. Our next tri board meeting will be in September. September yeah. The first meeting in September. So if we get them to this, the town administrator before the end of the, well, middle of the month. Yeah, before fr next Friday. Okay. Vacation. Oh, yeah, before, you're right. yeah, the 14th. And then that gives them a couple of weeks to. It gives them time to work on it before they come talk to us. People may be on vacation too. Uh, is this the first time this was done? I think this is the first time they've ever. <coughs> yeah, they're very nice. They're very well done. Mm -hmm. They read through it. Um, it's interesting. You can see some of the uh, agendas that different part departments have as you read through their analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, the one thing that, uh, except for a couple of departments, I didn't really see a lot about any opportunities for cost savings, which was, uh, could have been nice. Um, Picking out the critical things and trying to go forward with really critical for the departments and those first it would be a good opportunity. I think Molly, you hit a lot of the, uh, the important things on the sequence of what should happen. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very nicely done. Yeah. Is there any chance we can get this put on a spreadsheet? Oh, the actual tables? Yeah. We could. We could Bridget take them all and consolidate them down into one? Maybe. So in that matrix. We could, we could combine them all together. Mm -hmm. It'll be a big matrix. So. We just want to be careful. Well, actually, if you we, we just want to be careful that they're identified by department. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Correct. So maybe color code them, color code them, so you know mm -hmm. whose department is, and you can see the overlap. They easily can see the overlaps. Mm -hmm. We should also acknowledge too, again, just for the viewing audience too, that um, the planning board last night at their meeting, uh, they also put together a SWOT analysis. Was again points that from the perspective of a planning board would be quite unique so um, mm -hmm. appreciated their effort on that yeah that's the one we got today yeah uh, so do so so our department's clear about what we're going to do with these because people spent a lot of time putting this together and so I don't know when you asked them to do it, if you were clear about what was going to happen, but now we're going to ask them more questions and ask them to do more work. So 
it, is there a plan for what's going to happen, and, and do, do they know it? I, I think so. I think they yeah. do. I mean, I mean, the more questions we're asking now are clarifications, I think. Right. Uh, personally, I, I don't think I know what we were going to do with it because how would we know this is what we're asking for? We're combining and gaining information and we're finding out where the th issues are that we need to address. At that point in time, it's a finance issue. It's an understanding where there's crossover and it's a clarification issue. If IT issues are, are needed in, in a lot of different departments, well, then let's sit down with everybody and say, guys, everybody's got an IT problem. Let's sit and, and address that and let's work on that. But I, I can't put together and formulate a plan until I know what, what some of these things are and as Guilford said there's a lot of things that we're gaining for information and knowledge on these things as well no I think it's but, good but I just think feedback and I guess maybe this is part of that communication thing that you know that these are very good and that this is the next step or whatever to let people know that we're moving it along that they didn't just do this and it's going to go in a file well, they somewhere. have they have the weekly meetings at town hall and it's there to discuss you know all that goes on and I would hope that this would be well, that's know, what brought I'm back to them at that sure time that I mean you know those are weekly in the safety um, mm -hmm. building committee uh, not building committee but safety committee is also um, you know another opportunity for people that have worked on these to also uh, know where we're going with it well we could ask Mike I mean I I think it was clear that the next step was that we were going to take a look at these pull them together and then each department was going to be we were going to have a conversation with everybody. Was that clear to yeah, you? Yeah, that was clear to me. I, I, uh, I did it with the full understanding that what I was putting on the paper, I was going to be, you know, you obviously can't explain everything on a piece of paper. So um, I knew that there was going to be more questions. And it was a way for me, as a department head, to tell you what my strengths, you know, perceived strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and, and threats were. And um, on top of that, it actually was kind of a nice uh, test for me to, as a new department head, kind of channel and get some tunnel vision on my thoughts on, on the department as a whole. So it was a nice exercise to do that just for me. And then with the follow-on, everyone understands that this is probably what's going to drive us when we talk about just this year. As we start talking and we start asking questions about, well, <coughs> you're asking for money here, but you're saying that's one of your strengths already. This is a weakness. Why aren't you asking for that? Something. I mean, that's that's the bigger payoff out, out of this is when we start taking it and then we understand it more fully and then we start looking at the budget. If you're asking for money here, but that's your strength, we're gonna say, huh? Right. And I think it was also clear that where your perceived threats are, it goes in the opposite direction, where you know you really don't know what could potentially happen. So if you're asking for money in that area. Maybe maybe a little bit more um, investigation is required to, to find out if you do need more money for that area. So it was it was clear. And different committees have different things. The, the planning board may be concerned about uh, development in certain areas of town where right. they may t need to address and where they need to put some uh, practices in that. that you know, has to do with something completely different from finance departments and from select boards. But it's if there's any opportunity to, for us to understand and help with that, and the school can learn from that as well. If you have perceived developments coming in with, you know, 138 homes on it or something like that, it influences the entire community, and, and it's a communication way for everybody. That's the other part of what you were saying earlier, Jerry. Is um, I don't know what the strengths and weaknesses of the DPW are, uh, but for the board to know what everyone's are, if you, you know, it can only help because we can see, does the DPW have the same problem as the public safety department? Maybe we can take a, an approach to that that's more global mm -hmm. and fix the whole, the entire problem rather than just plucking away at each department. Can I ask, um, just Linda a question? So, Linda, um, you know the schools were uh, wanted more time to put it together, but I was just looking at the draft minutes from your your last meeting, and it said that you needed more clarification on. on yeah, I, I thought the point about the clarification of the purpose was important because we were under the understanding we were doing a SWOT analysis of the town as a whole, not of the schools, and so we will do that at our August meeting of mm. just the schools. Okay. But it wasn't clear to us why we were doing it. Okay. So, 
the well, clarification and the constant messaging is helpful. Sure. In Do fact, I didn't know until just now that really the budget and the funding decisions will be based on analysis of the SWAT. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Annie, um, she had actually called me right after the last the meeting where we talked about this, and she said that you guys are already you were, were already have embarked on your own planning. So she didn't she thought that this would dovetail well into that. We're doing our own strategic plan based right. on um, strategic plan with qualitative criteria and assessment measures. Okay. But it isn't a SWAT. Got it. It's, okay. It's got goal areas defined by the Department of Education that we will then put in our own standards and goals and measure measurements. Right. So we will need to do the SWOT analysis as a separate exercise. Right. As opposed to far-flung fields for, you know, putting that as a weakness on potentially for, you know, uh, for the athletic program or something like that, that you might wind up putting on this one. Say again? Meaning like any ball fields. Yeah, like the ball fields might be an example of an area of weakness where we have needing to use the young men's club and blah blah blah. That would appear on this type of analysis, but that's not appearing on your qualitative strategic plan about Oh, I think that actually would come up in both places because okay. it's a major financial <coughs> we see it as a major capital project and a major financial need. And for us, identifying both in the SWOT analysis, this is a priority of the town, mm -hmm. but we don't have the funding for it. Right. Okay. And it's a priority for the schools, but we don't have the funding for it. It's got, I, it will show up I'm both. in both. Okay. Just talking about school planning, how are you guys approaching the vocational school and, and the demands of the vocational school? In terms of we can't predict what their increases are every year, or plus, in terms of the we, students that want to go there? No, the students who go there, I understand that. We cannot predict what their increases are going to be, and we have no input or say into what that. We have no representation. Um, I was talking to John Seidbeck about that, and, and it's really, it's really kind of, I didn't know, know this, that we have no representation. There is nobody from Hadley who represents the interests of Hadley when they talk about it. It's just a blank check from the Smith Board of Trustees, Smith Bill. Vocational Board of Trustees to set the rate wherever they want to and tell us, pay it. And the mayor. And, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's mayor, not course, yeah. that's not really fair to our, our communities or any community, other communities in, the, in this area that we just have to suck up. And now we actually, it costs more to send a kid to Smith than it does to Amherst. And, and people complain about the high cost in Amherst all the time. School choice, yeah. So it, it's like, uh, is that one of the bigger... Cause that's that will a, be on our threat list. Because I, I guess that's something I see as something that has to come from both the school committee and the, and the select boards. We mm -hmm. have to stand up and say, look, this is not right. We need to... Yeah, we, we certainly, uh, we write them letters anytime we think their assessment goes up too much to say, you, you can't do that to all of the schools. So, so what's I don't know how effective those letters are. Yes. I don't, we usually don't get a, de a reduction in the bill. And you probably don't get a response either because they don't feel they have to give you right. a response. And do we even know when the trustees are meeting to set the rates? I mean, I know I've read about it in the paper after the fact, but... Are we ever even invited well, to the meeting? I'm sure. Yeah. It's no. a publicly posted meeting. I'm sure if we showed up all... all checked out their website to find out when the meeting is. We aren't personally notified of it. Okay. So it's not like regional, you know, in a, in a true Very regional than district. Franklin County they never school. even invited the school committee for any of the graduations of kids that graduated from, you yeah. know, from Hadley over there either, never extended mm -hmm. invitation to the school board. And Smith Folk actually supposedly has the, has the their, their organization and their um, 